course you are. All right, now I'd just like to check a few things, a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. Can I hear a shout from the audience from anyone who has ever played or seen played Dungeons and Dragons? All right, now, can I just hear a shout from everyone in the audience who has no idea what Dungeons and Dragons actually is? Okay, strap yourselves in, you're in for a bumpy ride. <laughs> But it's going to be great fun. And what you're going to see here tonight is not strictly speaking Dungeons and Dragons, but it is Dungeons and Dragons inspired. Tonight, we are going to take three unsuspecting comedic improvisers on an adventure, an adventure of excitement, of danger, of death-defying, de I already said danger. There's too many geeks. Anyway, they're going to go on an adventure. They do not know what is going to happen. I have some vague idea of what's going to happen because I audience is roughly uh, consists of player groups of one <laughs> who have a single dungeon master each. Amazing! Amazing. <laughs> now if you're not familiar with the rules of Dungeons and Dragons or you're just worried about which edition we're going to be using, <laughs> get those ideas out of your head. The only edition we're going to be using is fun edition. <laughs> because we're not going to really use any great rules tonight. We're going to use some very simple rules, uh, which I will explain in a moment, but I am not going to be dungeon mastering alone tonight because while I will be setting the scene while I will be talking about the plot, while I will be describing what is happening to the players and adjudicating the outcome of their actions, I won't be doing everything alone. No. Tonight, as always at Dungeon Call, I will be aided and abetted by the one, the only, Richard McKenzie! Hello. Evening, he will be creating the world and like you know setting the scene and the tone and introducing you to our various places and locales. Uh, I uh, will be playing every other person that the heroes will be meeting tonight. Well, normally that would be true. Normally. But because Pax is slightly larger than we're used to, uh, I have some guest villains tonight. What? Uh, The, uh, the table of uh, uh, props here. Yeah, there they are. It is a who's who of comedians, performers uh, from PAX and stuff. We'll get through who they all are uh, later on as they appear. Uh, but basically, myself and my villainous crew, our only job tonight is to murder all of the players. <laughs> every time, Richard. Yes. But it is, in fact, your job. I'm just getting into it. Uh, so it's going to be fun. It's going to be great. Do you feel ready, Richard? I'm super ready. Okay, all right. Go, super ready. go and get yourself all spooked up. Get ready. I'm super excited for you to know what's going on. Yes. Because we've made some stuff up backstage that you're not aware of. Great. <laughs> you know what they say, no module survives contact with the players. All right, off he goes. Give them a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. simple rules tonight. The rules are exceedingly simple. Basically, any time one of our players decides that they want to try something, do something, affect the outcome of the story in some way, they will roll this. Yes. If you don't know what this is, it's a slightly deflated 20-sided dice. Give me some noise if you've ever rolled one of these bad boys. Yes. Now, also, if you haven't rolled one of these because you play a system like that's based on a dice pool of tens or sixes. Don't worry, I've I got your back, it's cool. But I don't want to roll 16 inflatable D10s across this stage. <laughs> or if we were playing Exalted, 25 of them. We're not doing that. Yes, that was for those seven people, well done. Okay, so uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll this dice. Now, in the higher the number that comes up, the better the result. They will declare their action, they will roll this dice. Um, someone at some point will reinflate us a little bit. That'll probably happen several times. And if the number is high, that is great. If the number is low, you'll find out. Um, and the best number, of course, to roll on a 20-sided die is... Now, we did 
to practice this because if they roll a 20, it's a time on a tradition that you must shout 20 in your most excited, most exuberant, most yes, this shit is getting real kind of voice. So I want you to practice that. Let's just pretend I've rolled this dice and it landed on a 20 and I announce that it is a 20 and I say, it's a 20! Don't you wish you could record that and take that home for your home games? Wouldn't that be great? You're trying to roll a 20, like eight, 900 people just scream 20! Oh, anyway. Alright, so that's, that's the only rule we're really going to have. Alright, um, there are a few other things. Um, this is a live improvised show. While Richard and I have conferred and he has apparently thrown those notes out and done whatever the fuck he wants, <laughs> the players do not know what is going to happen in the plot and they're going to be making it up as we go along. And we also, uh, we would like to encourage you to get involved. And sometimes during the show, myself or the players will ask you for suggestions. Now these could be anything, they could be the name of a place, the name of a character, a type of thing, any kind of suggestion. Um, the players will probably ask you for some suggestions for their characters. Uh, and during the show as well, I will give them permission to turn to you at any point if they don't know what they should do during the story and ask you for advice. And I just, I just want to stress, that if they do that, please, please, give them helpful advice. <laughs> yeah, there's like half a dozen people who've been here before who are like, we know what you're gonna say, and we're gonna ignore it anyway. Um, so the person who said, do we have to? No, but you have to live with the consequences if they take your terrible advice. <laughs> and if you say split the party, they probably don't even know what that means. No, no they do, they do know what that means. Anyway, enough, that's enough for me. Do you feel like you know what's going on? Now, I just before we continue, I would just like for you to thank once more our wonderful musicians for this evening, Ali and Colin of Pickup. You can come back to your mic stands. You can come back over here. Now, they are just playing music at the start of the show, and I love their, I love their tunes, but they are also going to provide some incidental music, some little musical stings, some little musical gags of their own. Um, so watch out for them during the show. That's going to be a lot of fun. But are you ready now to meet your players for this evening? We have three guests for this evening, and our first guest has played Dungeon Crawl several, many times before. It's always a pleasure to have her. You may recognize her face from such places as the Big Hoo-Ha, one of the greatest improvised troops here in Melbourne and also in Perth, but also from the television series The Bachelor Unpacked. Please welcome to the stage, Brianna Williams! you have adopted the stance of perhaps a non-human character of some sort. I'm a goblin. Uh, a goblin. Uh, anyone, any goblin players in the house tonight? You have made an unpopular choice, but it's good. We like our popular choices. We like to give the underdog a chance here. And Brianna, what can you tell us about your goblin? I'm the Prime Minister of Goblins. What is your name? Scott Goblins. <laughs> And how long have you been Prime Minister of Goblins? No, since August. Uh, I see, I see. Uh, I, I have a feeling we, we might find out how Goblin Prime Ministers are chosen tonight. So I, well, in Goblin terms, PM also stands for Perverted Monster. <laughs> well, that's oddly true of our actual... Anyway, um, now, is there anything you'd like to ask the audience about yourself, yes. Scott Goblins? What is a biological adaptation that goblins have that humans don't? Alright, just now, if you've got an idea for this, shout it out nice and loud so we can hear you. Extremely large thighs. Extremely large thighs. If that is a comment on my thick thighs, you're welcome. <laughs>
We stop the boats. Luckily, I prefer we stop the boats. <laughs> may be familiar to some of you from the incredibly successful hit Dungeons and Dragons podcast Dragon Friends please welcome to the stage the one the only Eden Lacey <laughs> Eden I'm, I'm sensing a vibe from your character wait you're a uh, Yeah, someone was 
Oh, look, you know, if someone's selling magic potions, someone's got to... Well, someone's got to be on the checkout. Someone's got to, yeah, say, yes, you can take those. You can have that, um, yeah. but do you have any fly-by apocryphy cards? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Any frequent broomstick miles, yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, exactly. Is there anything else you'd like to ask me with? Um, yeah, but one other thing uh, is that um, I'm not a very brave bard. I have one big fear. And grasshoppers. Grasshoppers, yeah, exactly. <laughs> back to haunt you. Oh, no. We'll find out. Please thank Louisa Vitale. We'll see. We'll see. Now, we we'll have all of our players back at the stage. It's time to set the scene. All three of you. Scott Goblinson, <laughs> Gareth Zanadu, and Polyphonic. You haven't mentioned together for many days. <sighs> because you have heard tell of a legend. A legend befitting this time of year. This Halloween. Eden. It's always called something else in the fantasy stories, isn't it? Screw that, we're calling it Halloween. <laughs> and you've decided this Halloween is the day, it is the day, when you will defeat the greatest evil known in this land. For there is a small village nearby, a village surrounded by high mountains and mists, a village which those who enter find it very difficult to leave. And it is said that they cannot leave, because once there they fall under the sway of a very powerful vampire. A vampire whose name, of course, is... Now, I want you... I don't want you to give me the obvious answer. <laughs> Make one up. What is the vampire's name? Who rules on this bridge? find a scene of gloom and slight depravity. Oh. Oh, it's fucking 
Suddenly the room goes silent. That sucks. You should listen to Sally. That does suck. So, um, yeah, you might notice that you came in here and then there was the mist that came down and you couldn't get back out because you walk into the mist and then suddenly you're walking back in again. And so it was very, very odd uh, and a little bit derivative, to, to be honest. <laughs> so, I, I didn't say that, I must have missed it. I found it. that has descended upon the town of Riverwood and, uh, and there is a terrifying vampire with an unfortunate name which I'm going to have to fucking deal with later <laughs> on the top of the mountain if, if you brave adventurers could, could uh, kill him and, and, and spare us of his evils I would give you all the shit that the town has <laughs> To the sick, I found a whole bunch of animal skins. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> so, a straight stick, some animal skins, oh, and I've got this chest of gold that I can't use because I can't leave the town, so I suppose you can have that as well. I have been meaning to start our investment portfolio. Yes. <laughs> gold is the main currency of goblins, that and human blood. I would very much like the stick. <laughs> I am also the town seller of stuff. <laughs> For some reason, I forgot what that name is. <laughs> Provisioner, why not? <laughs> what do you need? I need that thing, but filled with holy beer. <laughs> it's like holy water, but beer. It's amazing, because it actually is filled with beer already. <laughs> wow. So you can have that. You can have that. I'm going to secretly roll to see if it really is holy. You should have secretly rolled to see if it was secretly with beer. <laughs> I'll keep that result to myself. Oh, no, I have no free hands! My provision comes in the form of information. What is the vampire's weakness? Right. Delightful. Uh, do I have any cheese back there? I had a. <laughs> ah! It's a particularly long and knobbly piece of cheese. Oh. It looks very good. Uh... <laughs> I ought to die on that mountain. What? No, nothing. But now that you are properly provisioned, will you set forth and kill the vampire? Yes. 
Okay, on three, we stop the boats. <laughs> Wood. All right, you ascend the mountain path as the sun sets and the moon rises. Ah, oh, honestly, the worst thing about adventuring is the walking. <laughs> you arrive at the castle. There. Oh, wow. <laughs> he said it was the worst. I thought we'd skip it. This is the most conveniently located adventure I've ever been on. And let me just say, I'm happy about it. I'm glad they built the castle just sort of a few meters up the mountain. So, the top of the mountain so overrated. It's like a Kosciuszko level mountain. Mm, yeah. Just not really a mountain. It's essentially a hill. Just a hill. It's, yeah. just, it's just a little mountain. And we're like, it's our mountain! Yeah. And everyone else is like, it's not a mountain. It's not, but yeah. All the mountain <laughs> is the foreboding castle gold bloom. <laughs> Before you stands its mighty, enormous, wooden double doors oh. with an enormous metal door knocker oh. right in the center. Clunk, 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 clunk. <laughs> what? Is that? Clunk, 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 clunk. Oh, I think it's broken now. Suspicious, foreboding figure. <laughs> Played by none other John Roberts on that show! Hello. They gave me this role because I look like the bloke from Rocky Horror. <laughs> you have knocked upon the door of my master's house. Are you here? To wake up, Jeff. <laughs> yes, 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 we are. Yes, yes. Oh, that. Mm. <laughs> that is but the first secret I have extracted from you. Did you just do a little cum? <laughs> Steaman Cat. Yes. Are you using the skin of that cat? I just used the skin of that cat. That's not for drumming. Question me not. I am the one who asks the questions.
future, this castle of overacting, <laughs> I will require from each of you a secret. Now, secret or violence, it is a party game that's not popular. <laughs> Except when playing Ducks and Dragons. <laughs> yes, none of us have ever been popular. <laughs> Secret or violence? Oh, there are two choices. <laughs> there's really, there are two options. There's one choice. Okay, yeah, if you want to be standing. Soon. <laughs> All right. Which one of us wants to give up a secret? Mine are too depraved. Like how I had sex with the dead horse from the ring. I can't tell anyone that. <laughs> one secret. Oh. Now everyone knows I had gross dead horse sex from the ring. And now I will tell the Russians. <laughs> but, but, they like it. But I can't tell him my secret. Because then he'll know that uh, when I was little, I covered myself in pig shit, and then I rolled around on top of them like Freddie Mercury did in the music video from I Want to Break Free. <laughs> as to this narrative. Uh, I think we have to tell the Russians in order to advance. Okay. <laughs> but I wow. certainly can't tell my secret that when I was a younger bard, I used to play the viola. Oh. That's fine. <laughs> what a shit it's The most shameful. <laughs> You've ever touched <laughs> has been. 
being broken, you may enter as well. We'll talk later. Oh, he disappears. Put a bit in where the players get to make some stuff up. <laughs> it always goes fantastically well. All right. You are now inside the castle of Goldbloom, and as you proceed through the antechamber, you find yourselves in an enormous room. A long table fills the center of the room. Most of it is empty, but at one end, you can see several figures seated at the table. Figures who are eating something, making a disgusting noise. No, I have that thing where you can't hear that. <laughs> it's a uh, real anxiety disorder. I literally cannot hear people chewing. Do you like play some music over the top? Please.
his shirt off outside the front of the castle? No. Yes. Oh, sorry. That's... Just How did we miss that? <laughs> You did get here very quickly, though. You walked very quickly. Ah, uh, yes, so perhaps you would like to read some more words from the books that might give you some insights into how to proceed further. All right, I've got this one, which is... Ah, uh, yes, you've chosen... Okay, I want to conjure in 
his mind uh, the only thing that wolves are scared of, which is? Well, wolves are like dogs, and the only thing that dogs are scared of are very aggressive cats. So, you know when a cat's in a house and the cat's like, and like fucking, and so I want to I wanna put the image of a very aggressive cat right in front of his face, like clawing at his face. Okay, roll that dice, see if it works. Can I just break character for a second? I'm not a werewolf. I'm, I'm from Jersey. My name's my name's Nikki Gabagoo. I just woke up here one day. They sold this shit to my head. He's, they're doing experiments on me. I don't want to be here. So I don't know if you met the guy who runs this place. His name's Jeff Goldblum. That's who oh, he's yeah. looking for. Wong is here every day with a knife. He says, knife finds a way. He thinks it's fucking funny. It's not. It's a bad reference. <laughs> So I, I know there's this whole thing about a teenager's gonna kill Jeff Goldblum. No, nah, a knife will do it, pretty much. He's just a man, he's a, he's a musician, he's from Jersey too, so just stab the guy. Huh. Unless I'm wrong, in which case I'm sending you off on this whole other thing which the DM is gonna hit me for, so that's fine. Do, did you want to come with us? Because we've, we've got a, a teenager and a werewolf, all we kind of need is a vampire, we've got the full set. No, I appreciate that, but I only have like three minutes of material, so I'm gonna yeah. to go. Oh, well, uh... Good day to you. Good day to you too. You know, I really should have planned an exit, but uh, I'll just press the button and let you out, okay? Gobble go. All right. All right. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Verhoeven. Yeah. Uh, press the button. Bonus skin. Did you say bonus skin? No, I when, said bonus. When he presses the button, do the stairs turn into a slide? Yes. Whee! Sexier than us. Look, I didn't even say that. I didn't Jeff say that. Goldblum bit my neck and now I'm a 
You just slut shamed Jeff Goldblum, okay? That is not cool. Wait, it's also, I think, the first time a man over 50 has ever been slut shamed. So, I mean, it's an interesting comment society wise, but fuck you. Yeah. You know what? For that comment, we're totally gonna bite you and eat you. No. Yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. gonna bite you and eat you. And you're gonna turn into vampires and you're gonna spend the rest of your life being a fucking vampire. I'd just like to comment on the fact that we clearly never play sexy because I don't think this is sexy. <laughs> Some of the figures. Hell 
Uh, Assange, the wicked. <laughs> yes, the horse fucker. <laughs> the viola molester. <laughs> the red guy. <laughs> and the unfaithful stick. <laughs> you spent so much time seeing if you could. You didn't consider whether or not you should. <laughs> For you'll find, my friends, that life finds a way. <laughs> Five! Okay. <laughs> One of them sways a little. 
the chairs come to life and sing a very terrible song, which we, we won't go into. Yeah, Beauty and the Beast is the worst one! Yeah. Yeah. You pull the chairs over, you flip the table, and there, the door to the, the main antechamber lies open, and you make it to the doors just in slow motion. And you crumbles into nothingness. <laughs> and Jeff Goldblum is no more! Yeah! You stagger back down the mountain. It's only about 20 steps, it doesn't take long. And you're back in the town of Riverwood. The people somehow have sensed what has happened. I mean, I say somehow, it's probably the fucking enormous castle that's just collapsed. <laughs> just outside the village. Come out of the tavern and look at you in wonder, for you have done what they thought was impossible. That was fucking awesome. <laughs> Dream big. Believe in yourself. Unfortunately, you're still dying of the poison. Ah! Oh, oh, shit. Shit. What were you doing to save Gareth? Please put your hand. 